Hello, my crafty friends. This is Tia Woodward. I am Stamp with Tia. I am located in Richland, Washington, and I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. And today I am coming to you to show you just a super quick little project. This is a um, gift tag that I included um, as one of the one of the goodies that I added to my customers. Um, catalog packets when I sent out the new mini catalog. The new mini catalog that I'm referring to is the September through December 2023 mini catalog from Stampin' Up! And um, if you were a customer of mine, I sent you in the last year, I've sent you a catalog, I've sent you a gift tag, and there was a make and take in here. <clears throat> and um, I just... I wanted to show you how to make these gift tags because I think they're cute. I think they are things that somebody might want to make themselves. So real quick, I'm going to go about showing you how to do that. So to, to make this, um, I actually use a few different products. I'm mixing, mixing some stuff up. To get these snowflakes, I am using the Abundant Beauty decorative masks that are new in that um, new mini catalog and one of the sheets has these snowflakes there are some other sheets too there's some autumn leaves there's a hound's tooth and then there's this beautiful nested set that makes um, some sunflowers and i will be demonstrating each of these at a later time but today i am showing you these snowflakes and this will this will go quick so I'm gonna set these aside just a little bit to the top there. And because I'm using my blending brush, I am going to put down um, some grid paper to protect my desktop. I'm gonna bring in just a piece of, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to bring in a piece of, I'm using the thick basic white cardstock. You could use the thinner. <clears throat> I prefer the thick. I like that, do you now, I'm an older person and I remember those heavier duty um, tags that you, oh man, um, I wanna call them library tags, but I think I'm calling them the wrong thing. And they were kind of that um, tan color and then they had kind of a, a darker brown um, re hole reinforcement at the top. I'm kind of going for that look and that feel, except I'm going Christmassy. So you can see I've, I've used a contrast color here um, so I went with the thicker paper. To start with, I, I'm going to um, use the mask on my cardstock, and I've started with a piece that's two and a half by four and a quarter, and then my die, I'm going to use, you've, um, I'm pulling from the tailor-made tags, and I'm using this one here because, well, because I like the hole better. Um, depending on what you're using to string it with. Now, I am using a string here and I could use this smaller hole here, but I don't know, I, I love this more industrial looking one. This one is a little fancier and it's, it's pretty, it's just not the look that I'm going for. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna use this largest tag and you can see you've got all different size of tags here. So you could make this as big or as small as you want. Set that aside for a second. I'm gonna pull my mask over here and put it right over my cardstock. And I'm just gonna hold this down. I found that while I was doing this, that my cardstock didn't move around. Um, if you feel better, you can put a piece of um, ta a looped tape underneath to hold it in place. So I just kind of made sure that my, um, where I'm gonna be punching a hole from the die, that I'm leaving enough space up there. And I'm going to move this around just a little bit. And then I'm going to hold it down. See my finger is on top of that cardstock. And I'm coming in. I'm using Balmy Blue. And I'm just going to come in with my blending brush and fill in on this mask. And I am not doing anything fancy or crazy here. You could, you easily could. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you an alternative. And, and it's, again, it's not even fancy and crazy, but um, I think it's a fun idea. 
It's something that's super popular right now. And I'm gonna move my finger. You could make this as light or as dark as you want. Now your ink goes on a little bit darker and my ink is a little extra dark at the moment because I just re-inked my pad. And I think my head keeps hitting the camera, I'm sorry. All right, I'm gonna lift that up. See how pretty those snowflakes are? And then I'm gonna take this ink and I'm just going to go around the edges and kind of give it a halo of color that ink is gonna lighten as it, as it dries. <clears throat> and I just kind of leave a white spot in the center. Remember, I'm gonna use a dye on this. Now, I'm not gonna stamp the back until after I've used the dye. So I'm going to move my ink aside. And I am going to bring in my mini cut and emboss machine. So I wanted to show you just how quick and easy this was from beginning to end. If you've got a homemade project that you've made for somebody for the holidays, or even if it's not homemade, and you just wanted a really special little touch on your packaging, I think this is the way to go. But I happen to love homemade details. That's a love of mine. Not necessarily a love of everybody's. So now I have, my tag is cut out, throw this away. Now before I put this cut and emboss machine away, well actually I need to get it out of my way for just a second. For my hole reinforcement, I'm going to bring in a piece of the balmy blue and I have a piece of um, adhesive sheet and normally this comes in 12 by 6 inch sheets and I save all of my little scraps. So this is just a scrap that I'm going to put on a piece of, <clears throat> of, uh, of a scrap of balmy blue. And I'm just going to peel this and put it on the back before I run it through the cut and emboss machine to create my hole reinforcement. You know, these always peel easier when I'm not on camera. There we go. Oops. So. Just going to do that. I didn't need this big of a piece for what I'm cutting, but it's easier for you to see it on camera if it's that big. And then there are two different sets of hole reinforcements. This one, the round one, matches the other set of tags and this one matches this set of tags. So double check. Run this through and now when I die cut these, these are now a sticker on the back and I don't have to use glue and try to line it up. I just peel these off, line them up, and these will line right up on my tag. Now my the other tag that I'm going to show you, um, I'll have to die cut the tag but I've already die cut the whole reinforcements. And here we go. Bring this over. 
So that die piece cuts three of these at a time. You're gonna need two, or I'm choosing to use two. I, I want one on the front and one on the back. And I'm putting the flat side up at the top and I'm aligning that oval hole like that and turning it over and doing the same. And then I'm going to show you the, the stitch lines with this die kind of make a rough edge. And so I'm actually going to use my bone folder and smooth them out. And it does not affect the appearance on the other side. I'm gonna use, and I'm just gonna use the back end of my bone folder and just run it down and it just makes it you can still feel them, but they're not as sharp feeling. Then I am going to take, I have a two from stamp that came with my Celebrate with Tags stamp set. And here it is right here, it's two from. And I am going to use that balmy blue. This is a red rubber stamp set. I'm going to line that up. Lovely. And where's my chamois? I didn't get my chamois out. Now I've got it out. Get that cleaned off. Guess I'll be using that again in another color. Close that, then <coughs> to embellish the front, I am pulling from the pastel, pastel adhesive backed sequins and I am using the blue sequins because I think they just look lovely on here. And I'm gonna use the bigger ones. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool. I'm gonna use the clay end on the back here to pick up my sequins with. And I'm going to position those. At least the first two will be the big ones. And then I guess I'm going to use a small one and maybe put that right here. There we go. So that is that part. And then I'm going to take, I tried a bunch of different ribbons and I, they didn't rock my world for this particular color combination. So I ended up using from the Simply Elegant Trim, the silver. And you can cut that as long or as short as you want. Mine is about 12 inches. I usually cut mine 10 to 12 inches. Find the center, push it through the hole, pick up my ends, pull them through, trim, and my gift tag is done. So what I wanted to show you, so and you can see I ended up with quite a bit darker, probably because I was excited because I was doing this on camera. Oh, I'm way up high. I'm sorry. It was way too high for you to see. So now I'm going to show you an alternative color that's kind of trendy right now. And this would not be something that would work in my home. And all of my kids are considerably older. Matter of fact, even my grandkids are older than this. But um, I know that this is super popular right now. So I am going to show you another version in pink because pink is so popular right now. So I'm gonna set these aside and I'm going to use the new color that we got this year called Bubble Bath. So it's this beautiful um, lighter pink. It's a true light pink. And I'm going to use my chamois to clean off my 
mask because it's got that balmy blue ink on it. There we go. So I don't contaminate. That's good. I have another piece of, oops, I need my grid sheet. Oh, how about if I just turn this, I've just flipped it over and I'm pulling a different set of snowflakes here. And I have So I'm using bubble bath on basic white and I'm doing the exact same process that I did with the balmy blue. So I'm just applying with the blending brush. And did that scooch on me just a little bit? It felt like it moved. I want to. Um, I, I will tell you too, so when I first got these, I tried using, when I first got the um, masks, I tried using the sponge daubers. I did not get as good and clean of a uh, image through the mask. I got an okay one, but the blending brush gave me a better image. So if you have the option of using using a blending brush, I recommend the blending brush. All right. So there is our, and this, this is going to lighten up. Now I'm going to do the same thing and I'm gonna create that halo of color around the edges. Just really subtle, very light. Almost put ready to put this in the cut and emboss machine. All right, set that aside, bring over the cut and emboss machine. Got my tag. Let's see. Do I want to do this? No, I want to do this. Let's see, looking, see if I want to scooch that a little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to scooch it so I get at least one great big full snowflake there. And run that through. I'm going to do the same thing I've already cut the uh, whole reinforcements in this case. I am going to stamp the two from on the back using the the two from from the celebrate with tags.
it's it's um, very light, but so is this ink, believe it or not. Okay, I can close up that ink. Clean off my stamp. Put on my hole reinforcements. Oh, no, before I do that, I'm going to just smooth out those that rough edge from the um, the die, and I'll I'll flip that over so you can see on the other side that this is not affecting the appearance on the other side at all. So you can still see the dotted line. So. I used that adhesive sheet on the back of my cardstock before I die cut it. And in this case, instead of that silver, I have a pink ribbon. Pink is just such a big deal right now, isn't it? I won't advertise the movie, but it's all because of a movie. So this is the bubble bath ribbon that comes in, and the name of it just went out of my head. It's a trio of ribbons, and I'm looking it up real quick. It's in the annual catalog, and it is called... It's on page 143 and it's called 3 8 inch sheer ribbon combo pack. And there is a lemon lolly, an azure afternoon, and a bubble bath in this package of ribbons. It's a sheer soft ribbon. And in this case, it's going to work perfect for my tag. So I am, I folded it in half, pushing it through my hole reinforcers, pushing my ends through the loop, then tightening that up, being careful. Even though I've got reinforcers on there, I still don't want to tear my paper. It is paper. Let's see if I pull one at a time maybe it'll pull there we go see that makes a real nice end and then I'm going to use my snips and do a nice little slant cut now for the bling from the same pack that I used for this gift tag there's a pink version and I'm going to use the pink pink sequins. Whoops. Okay, what's going on here? That one got crooked. I could tell it was going to go crooked. And then I think I'm going to use one of these small ones. Come on, what's going on? Maybe my ink is still wet. Shouldn't be. There we go. That's a little crooked. And my friends, we just made a second gift tag in an alternative color that might be non-traditional, but might be something that somebody absolutely loves. If you have a little somebody that is very much into that pink trend right now, that would be an option. So that's all I wanted to show you today is making a very quick and easy gift tag. And um, I will be showing more gift tags as the season um, goes on. I have lots of other stamp sets that um, I can make some really pretty gift tags with and some other papers and things like that. But this is what I included in my customers um, catalog packets and so these are already in some people's hands and I wanted them to see where they came from. Thank you so much for joining me today. You all mean the world to me. Stay safe. Be well. Hugs.